I love food. I also love to eat food. But food doesn't always reciprocate my love. In the past, I have fallen victim to the microscopic intruders that sometimes inhabit our food, forcing me to choose between either sitting on my toilet or being face first in it. I'm not alone, however, as it is estimated that 4 million Canadians experience foodborne illness every year. The mishandling of raw meat is partially to blame, but the larger concern is with contaminated foods that we assume are safe. In Canada, contaminated food products are recalled from store shelves to protect consumers from foodborne illness. Many microbes are responsible for these food recalls, but the leading contributor among them is the bacteria Salmonella. And there are three reasons why. Number one, there are over 2,600 Salmonella strains, and each are different from each other. Some can infect humans, and some can't. We don't quite understand why, but we know that it is linked to their genetics. Number two, other than chicken, salmonella contaminates many foods, and some that you wouldn't expect. Chips, chocolate, spices, lettuce, nearly no food is safe from the reach of salmonella contamination. <laughs> Number three, our current diagnostic tests for salmonella contamination are non-specific and look for the presence of any salmonella strain. As a result, food contaminated with non-infectious salmonella is still deemed unsafe and is disposed of, leading to large amounts of food waste. Thankfully, diagnostics are improving. Now, instead of merely detecting the presence of salmonella, we can access the genome of the contaminating strain through DNA sequencing. But what can we do with a salmonella genome? Well, I have a plan. I am currently studying the salmonella secreted protein H1, or SSPH1, which we believe could serve as a marker of infectious salmonella strains, as we have evidence that SSPH1 contributes to salmonella's ability to establish infection. Additionally, SSPH1 is found in a minority of strains. Therefore, if we can access the genome of the contaminating strain, we can identify if SSPH1 is present, and potentially if that strain is infectious to humans. However, we still need to identify the exact role that SSPH1 plays in infection. Once we know how SSPH1 contributes to infection, we will truly know how dangerous that strain is. My hope is that using SSPH1 as a marker of infectious strains will reduce unnecessary recall and disposal of foods carrying harmless salmonella. And while friendly salmonella in our food may sound like an unappetizing idea, Spoiler alert, many of the foods we eat daily contain thousands of microbes that have no negative impact to our health. But until we can routinely distinguish between infectious and non-infectious salmonella strains, please pay attention to food recalls, handle your raw meats properly, and remember, there is only one way to cook chicken, and that is well done. Thank you. <laughs>